things you can do in Joomla without a plugin like you do in WordPress. Long title. Um, I don't think it's blaming WordPress. It's just putting a little bit what you can really good do with Joomla. So, Patrick, start, please. Thanks, Robert. Um, so, yes, as Robert just said, it's not really uh, a, a sling off at WordPress. Um, it's more a bunch of things that I've just found in the last 12 months while working on WordPress uh, that certainly are, are a better implementation in Joomla. Um, and Joomla, in my opinion, is the, uh, the far, um, far superior built product. Um, and uh, here's a few reasons why. But first, a bit about me. Um, so I'm based in Melbourne, Australia. I uh, run my own company, Connect Presentation Systems, uh, certified Joomla administrator, <coughs> um, proficient WordPress user, and I'll come into more of that soon. Uh, if you want to reach out to me after the, uh, the session, um, you can find out all my various contact details at kps.fyi slash pj. So I'm a member of the Joomla Australia community, um, and you can find out more about all our activities at joomla.org.au or on Facebook and Twitter. And at the moment, during lockdown, we've been having virtual Joomla user group meetings on the third Tuesday of each month at 0800 UTC, so uh, early in the morning for some, um, nicely positioned in our evening in Australia at the moment. And if the world doesn't stay locked down in 18 months time or so or 15 months time. Um, we'd love to see everyone come to Melbourne, Australia for Joomla Day Australia, which uh, is going to be October 9 and 10, 2021. So let's not really go far past the fact that I'm comparing apples with oranges. Both systems have a lot of differences and both systems have pros and cons. Um, but uh, I've sort of had to look at a few of them in the past 18 months. So I've been using Joomla since it was Mambo, and I switched to Joomla as soon as it came out. Uh, started the Melbourne Joomla user group with a couple other guys in 2007. And until early last year, I'd avoided WordPress. I think I glanced at it when it was in the early days when I was comparing WordPress and Mambo, a couple other CMSs when I was looking for one in 2004, and I chose Mambo. So last year, I had an exponential learning curve by having to build eight WordPress sites where the client had previously had Joomla sites. And so I went from a complete novice to being quite a detailed um, WordPress user. And here's some of the things that I then found. Uh, I now specialize in maintaining and monitoring both Joomla and WordPress websites, repairing sites, and that's unfortunately more often a WordPress site improving sites. Uh, so I'm working on a plan at the moment for how businesses should have a checklist of all the things that they need to do to make sure that their site is functioning properly from analytics to um, uh, optimization, SEO, SEM, everything. And currently I manage over 70 Joomla websites and 12 WordPress websites. <clears throat> so let's get into the showdown. <clears throat> so my observations are based on experience with Joomla, experience with WordPress, observation over time, and a certain degree of personal opinion. So take it, some of it with a grain of salt, but hopefully you see uh, most of these are, are fairly valid observations. So the, we'll start with the Joomla list, and we'll race through it fairly fast. I've got, uh, oh, no, I'm, I'm ahead on time, so I've got about a minute per slide for all the, the rest of the, the presentation. So in Joomla, you can create an article and then you can press save and new, or you can press save and close, it takes you back to the list. In WordPress, once you've saved something, you're stuck on the page until you then tell it to go back to um, the list of pages or posts. Um, and having used Joomla for 15 years now, um, that's quite a confusing way to think about uh, that user experience there. Save as a copy is something that instantly drove me nuts when I was in, uh, in WordPress mode. So I had to go and install a plugin to clone articles um, because that's not part of the WordPress core functionality. Um, 
with Save as Copy in Joomla, I regularly use that to uh, progress a, a series of articles and keep all the settings or create placeholders on new sites by saving cop Save as Copy and just updating the few fields that need to be updated um, and find that a massive time saver. Article sorting. Uh, so when you're in the articles list in Joomla, you can easily sort the articles by uh, name, date, and the various other fields that are shown on that page. Um, in the WordPress version of that screen, uh, it's not very intuitive as to how many options you've got to sort, and quite often it's only sorting by the basics uh, of, of the article name. This one was a, a biggie when I was creating a couple of WordPress sites. Um, in our menu items in Joomla, there's um, menu item classes and page classes, uh, class suffixes, so you can put in a range of things. And in the menu items in Joomla, there's uh, page title and meta description tags as part of the menu item. So all of the things that create the menu structure and the SEO features are all built into the menu items in in Joomla. Um, also, when you change a menu item in Joomla, you keep the item ID and it just changes the structure of the menu item. So if you've styled something or you've put um, a particular URL together with a particular alias, when you change the type of menu item, those key factors stay the same. In WordPress, if you change a menu item, you actually have to delete the item and put it back in again. Or uh, and generally when you do that, that loses the item ID and any associated styling um, and you have to create a new menu item, which I very often found quite frustrating. Publishing the menu items is also something that's confused me in WordPress. Um, so when you unpublish a menu item or change the access control levels in Joomla, it's very clear that it's going to hide that item from the uh, from the audience or from um, the public if it's been an ACL change. <clears throat> and what that tends to do is is drop the um, drop the difficulty that you have um, in hiding something during development or making it only read only and things like that. So the WordPress menu item publishing system doesn't really have a great deal of structure there as to what that um, uh, those restrictions are. And it comes down to whether the template or the theme in WordPress quite often has it set up to, um, to recognize the fact that there's a disabled tag that's been used on the menu item. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me for a second. Um, all right, so then, Menu items and access control levels it relates back to the previous point in that uh, you can instantly assign a an access control level to the, straight to the uh, menu item so that it hides for particular users. And then article publishing dates and the finished publishing date. So the one thing that I find is quite frustrating with uh, WordPress is that there's not really a start and finish publishing date. So once you've created it and you've published it, it goes online. So really it has a start publishing date, um, but there's no easy way to, to schedule your content to start and finish. Um, and there's also no differentiation at times between a couple of the other dates that are in the Joomla system so that they're available uh, to do different things. Um, I use the finish and publishing date quite often in Joomla to again, create a series of articles. So you'll have the start date. And then um, if it's an announcement post, use the finish date to stop the, that post appearing on the, that date. And then I'll have a second article as the report come up uh, that will have a start date that matches the finishing date. So. Joomla's custom field system is part of the core and that makes uh, quite a bit of difference now as to how you go about accessing uh, and building the systems with those custom fields. Um, I quite often find um, the need to install other extensions sometimes is a bit more of a, a reach. So um, obviously you know, Joomla over the years has had systems like K2s evolved 
um, and so be to build out the uh, the flexibility there. Um, but since Custom Fields came into Joomla 3, I think that's sort of been a big game changer. Um, and WordPress still needs to have uh, extra types of uh, content added in to, to be able to manage all of that. Uh, access control levels in Joomla are, are quite significant in uh, in making life easier um, and giving permissions to, to different groups of people to use your site. Um, the, the basic levels that are in WordPress uh, don't quite cut it as, as cleanly um, and it's very hard to set up permissions, in my opinion, uh, in WordPress to do all of that. So. Uh, I prefer the Joomla user management system. Um, when you create a WordPress user, it, it will send the user an email uh, out of the box um, that uh, is quite often a long and, and cumbersome password for the user to remember. Um, or it's, you know, obviously, password security is critical, but sometimes um, creating a custom password uh, on the fly as you create the user um, is, is a, a suitable uh, method of, of creating the new user so that they've got quick and easy access. Um, and so the word, uh, sorry, the Joomla user management profiles uh, a preference for me there. Uh, this one partially relates to the breadcrumbs, but more so just in, in general to modules versus uh, widgets in WordPress. So there is a built-in breadcrumbs module, there's a built-in range of modules in Joomla, but there's not uh, necessarily the same number of, of modules and things in, uh, in the widget sort of setup in uh, WordPress. Um, the one thing that I've come to love about Joomla modules more is that it, it really um, gives Joomla a great degree of flexibility um, in that you can assign a module to any part of any page and any range of um, settings can be used to, to make content appear exactly where you want it, only when you want it to appear there. Um, when you add in some extensions like regular labs uh, modules anywhere, then the, the options are endless. So um, over the years, it's one of the things that I've found um, fantastic about Joomla is that I could put what the client wanted wherever the client wanted it um, within reason um, quite easily. And, uh, and that's another reason that I, I'll stick with, uh, with Joomla as a preference. Uh, HTTPS is obviously an essential nowadays. Um, the ability to turn off just in, turn on entire on your entire site just in the Joomla configuration is um, quite straightforward um, but putting it together in WordPress um, took me a, a few goes before I worked out that the easiest way was actually just to put it in the HT access file um, even though there's plugins available to do that. The way that Joomla has relative URLs and so um, everything is based on your base URL and relative to that point in the site it makes life so much easier. The number of times um, or the amount of time that it takes to restore a WordPress site versus a, a Joomla site um, becomes phenomenal when um, relative, sorry, absolute URLs are stored in the WordPress database. Um, not just in the content, but in things like GUIDs and, and other fields. Um, and it makes it just horrendously hard to, to manage um, and hard to troubleshoot sometimes because um, depending on where it's stored as to whether it's escaped in different places or not. So, I prefer Joomla's file and image management. Um, the new Joomla 4 Media Manager is going to make that a lot different out of the core. Um, I don't understand the 
ongoing uh, default in WordPress of putting things in a slash month slash date folder. Um, sure, it might help with with blogging um, and content management there, but uh, you can't actually see where all that is stored in um, the WordPress Media Manager. So the WordPress Media Manager just shows you a, an array of what you're uploaded. Um, whereas with Joomla, you can certainly have a tidier file and image management layout um, with your content organised into to more logical folders along the way. <coughs> For those who've ever updated a, a WordPress site, you'll be familiar with maintenance mode. Uh, so when you update WordPress or you update plugins in WordPress, it turns the site off temporarily and puts it into what's called maintenance mode. And there's nothing more frustrating than trying to urgently fix something and taking the site down for, for 10 minutes while it, it does its thing um, in the middle of the day. So uh, from a maintenance point of view, Having to install things in the middle of the night is quite a, um, a bit of a headache. Um, and that's another reason I prefer Joomla in that uh, it, it updates files independent of taking the site down. Um, and with the, you know, if you've got a, if you're concerned about it, then you've probably also got staging servers to test everything and, and work out what your liability is before it goes live. Um, in production, um, but uh, from experience, in most of the smaller business sites that I've run for the last 15 years, um, it's very rarely caused a problem uh, with a, a stray update. So. I love class suffixes. Um, I can style a menu, I can style an article, I can style a module, I can style an entire page based on putting a little word somewhere in one of the different parts of the, the site in Joomla. Um, I have worked out how to do the same sort of functionality with a plugin in WordPress, um, but I had to install the plugin. So once you've got the class suffix worked out and what that structure is um, and how to use those class suffixes, um, you quite often would find that your, your Joomla uh, capabilities and your design capabilities are, are enhanced uh, as it goes along from there. I touched on modules earlier. Module positions are what makes all of that possible. So having a fantastic set of, uh, have a fantastic set of module positions in the template structure in Joomla um, means that you can have uh, a great degree of flexibility. If you take the time to learn uh, how the template positions work and, and writing your own templates or modifying existing templates to add in other positions, um, then that the barrier that might be there on working out where you can put extra positions and how you can put extra positions and style them um, goes away. So um, I very much prefer module positions over uh, trying to work out the uh, theme structure in WordPress. Everybody that uses WordPress feels that everybody in WordPress needs to use a plugin called Yoast SEO. And Yoast SEO is the, the go-to extension in WordPress, plugin for WordPress. But what it tends to do is most of the things that the Joomla core has for page titles, meta descriptions, um, and Joomla has it throughout the entire system as a, a core item. And that makes SEO very straightforward to implement. Um, admittedly, I do use a few uh, tools to, to streamline the process, including Joomla Shack's uh, OS Meta Pro, um, which lets me edit all the page descriptions and uh, page titles in the one screen and lets me see what's missing. Um, but uh, there's a lot of functionality in um, Yoast that still escapes me. It seems to sort of have filled up with things over the years. Um, a deeper dive on that later might see me actually develop a, a SEO plugin for Joomla that, that takes care of things that are missing. Um, but if you know what you're looking for, there's certainly tools out there that can do things like uh, insert your um, 
metadata into um, metadata into the page. Um, what else? The other one. Uh, rich snippets for uh, Open Graph and um, Twitter tags and all that sort of stuff. So, so there's plenty to do, find out in there. And uh, I'm sure if you scour the net a little bit, you'll find that there's a lot of things on the way. Um, or a lot of plugins that are available to do the specialist bits uh, in there. Um, so, ah, now this is something that is quite often lost in Australia because we don't tend to build that many multi language sites. Um, but I'm sure that in Europe and uh, other parts of the world, um, Multi-language has always been a, a significant um, part of how you build sites. Uh, I sort of did my deeper dive on multi-language when we did the Joomla certified uh, certification a couple of years ago. Um, and then when I worked out what it did, uh, I was quite impressed with uh, what you've all built over years. So the multi-language functionality in Joomla is built in um, and you can quite easily build a multi-language site without any extra plugins if you need to. Um, WordPress, uh, you generally, again, need to install a plugin. Bulk article management is something else that I find is quite lacking in WordPress. Um, so I can sort of select certain things to delete them, but I can't necessarily copy them or change categories or things like that. So, so the batch tool in Joomla makes it easier to reassign categories, change access levels and all that sort of thing without too much of a problem. Um, and so that's another area that I prefer to use Joomla in. Uh, article management, again, you know, the, I think I've touched on it lots and lots in the past, but I think that's really the, the strength of Joomla is the category and tagging, uh, the article concept. Um, if you're coming back from WordPress to, to Joomla, um, you know, what seems to be often a conversation point is that people can't get their head around the fact that posts and pages are actually the same sort of content, um, but WordPress has separated them out. So um, you know, in Joomla, <coughs> you put your post into a blog category and you put your, your pages into relevant categories in the article system to make that up, and then you'd be off and running and, uh, and have it quite well set up. So. Uh, so then I've done this presentation a few times now um, <clears throat> in uh, Joomla Day uh, Australia last year and we did a, a, a quick run through um, a couple of weeks before that at the Melbourne Joomla user group. Um, <clears throat> what happened after I did it was that a few people had tuned in and the list then grew a little bit. So 20 grew to 25. Um, so we had a few more in now. Uh, which is good because I'm ahead of time. So just looking at the question stream on my other computer, um, I'll come back to you, Robert, in a minute. Uh, actually uh, talk about uh, the Gutenberg blocks in a minute. So Joomla out of the box now has a GDPR plugin and uh, a lot of work's obviously gone into to making that happen and how you extract your data uh, if you have a GDPR request. Um, that's one of those features that in Australia um, makes us scratch our heads, um, but clearly it's the state of the world now. So um, how we go about turning that on for Australian sites uh, is something that we've been looking at and we'll typically have it now uh, if we've got an international audience so that uh, the, the GDPR parts uh, are applied um, where necessary. Um, even though it's sort of law over there, it's still good practice to have that type of setup. Action logs, uh, getting a little bit more use in uh, the sites that I manage now. Um, it's quite good to be able to see who did something and, and what they did. Um, and with the flexible cust flexible plugin uh, system for writing extra action log plugins. Um, that's sort of very much been extended since it was added 
um, while ago. This is what I think is one of the big game changers. So um, when I first did this presentation, we sort of added Joomla 4 workflow, knowing that it was coming, but we weren't sure what's, what's been happening with it. Um, uh, I wrote an article in May's uh, Joomla community magazine on what to, what to expect in Joomla 4 and went into a lot more depth on Joomla 4 workflow uh, in that. Um, and I'm looking forward to implementing that on uh, a couple of sites uh, shortly, including my own one, which will then have a, a workflow that takes um, content submissions all the way through to publication and, and makes a big difference as to how um, you can transition your workflow and report back to um, authors or editors and publishers uh, as it moves through. Um, again, the plugin system for this is, is quite extensive and it's going to be uh, quite a a brilliant feature in my opinion. Um, I've not found something yet that does it in WordPress, but I'm sure that there's plugins out there. <laughs> Another thing I love is the Joomla search plugin structure. Um, the ability to create a, a plugin that searches through a particular type of content and then indexes that in the search. Um, I've seen that you need sort of more plugins for for um, WordPress, um, and quite often there's you know, paid plugins like WP Search that let you put a better search to replace the the WordPress default search. Um, but having it in as a, a core feature to be able to put in a search on your site um, again is a big difference for for Joomla over WordPress. And SMTP as a mailing option is is another um, feature over WordPress that's uh, in our core and not, it need, doesn't need a plugin in WordPress. So um, that means that instead of just using PHP mail, um, you can actually route your mail through an SMTP server so that it sends it more securely um, and directly from your, your client. Um, that can also mean that you can save a copy of sent mail and, and troubleshoot things a bit more. Um, but it also means that uh, you're not tied to um, doing large volume emails through PHP mail, which can sometimes cause trouble. So, I'm sure that there's more out there. Um, the 25 was certainly a, a nice starting point um, and the, the list will continue to grow over time. So, um, but I, in using it day in, day out for most of the last 15 years, um, I love Joomla. I th think that it's constantly evolving and constantly improving. Um, my other G JCM article um, last month was to, to start working out how to use GitHub so I could contribute to the project. Um, and there'll be more on that later in the day. Um, working with Phil, Philip Walton from the UK and Mark Bender from California um, to work on a series of articles on how you can go about uh, improving your knowledge on how to use Joomla, um, or sorry, use GitHub to participate in the Joomla project. Um, so there's a couple of features that are in that list that, that I think have got a few more things that we can improve on, and then we'll go from there and grow it to, uh, to the next um, next stage and hopefully get back some of the, the market share that might be available um, going forward. Um, but it's certainly a, a crowded environment now when you add in other services like Wix and Weebly and Squarespace and, and all of the other sort of build it yourself options um, that seem to have been taking up some of the, the market space. Now to be fair, there's a, a WordPress side of the list as well. So there has been a few things that I did start to find were uh, possibly a little better in WordPress, but we'll, we'll need to see what uh, what's happening there. Um, the Gutenberg Editor came out Christmas 2018. And in starting to use Joomla, oh, sorry, starting to use WordPress extensively at the start of last year, um, I gave that Gutenberg editor a go and the Blocks editor, 
um, and not having done a lot of sites in WordPress before then, um, the Gutenberg editor seemed like a, a good solution. Um, and then I started to find out what the page builder market in WordPress is like. And the page builder market's quite crowded and you've got market leaders like Elementor and uh, lots of other commercial ones. Uh, there's a bakery one and things like that. One of the things I've always found annoying about WordPress is that there was always a tendency to have um, a page builder that locked you into the, your, their template, which locked you into how the content was written. What I've tended to find also is that all of the page editors, including Gutenberg, when you start creating as a block, it creates excess amounts of code on the page. So quite often it's quite uh, nested and sometimes dirty uh, HTML that gets injected. Um, and that can increase page load times. It can slow down sort of loading of certain objects and things like that. So, so my go-to back to Joomla is to switch to using uh, Tiny MCE, and we had Tiny MCE come and talk at Joomla Day, Mel oh, sorry, Joomla Day Australia last year. Um, and their latest version, which I think comes in to Joomla 4, um, can be extended a bit more better with plugins. So there's a potential there that, that Joomla could end up with sort of block templates and other plugin tools along the way. The other thing I tend to find is that sort of once you've got your static pages done in WordPress, if you're then only using it as a blog, the blog doesn't really need the, the block editing. And so that makes it a bit interesting as to, um, to how much flexibility you give your clients to write that content themselves. So tied into that is the reusable content blocks. And that seems to be a bit uh, more associated with um, most of the page builders that you grab a page builder and you drop it into the to the place um, in that particular page builder component. So, so I think Joomla's got that um, in hand a little bit. Um, once you start looking into content creator extensions in Joomla, you will find that there's quite a variety there. So, one of the main ones I've seen used um, and. Uh, hopefully later um, in the year, uh, one of our Joomla Australia users, Norm Douglas, might uh, go through how he's built some of his sites. And he's combined the Joomla core with Joomla custom fields and then used uh, regular labs, uh, content anywhere, uh, sorry, and articles anywhere extension um, to lay out his content. And then um, it takes the, the content with the custom fields and create specific layouts. Um, and he's done it in quite an effective fashion. So it doesn't need an extra content creator um, or page builder to do it all. Um, he's sort of using the, the main part of the core and a couple of other aspects of some of the other extensions he's got available. Uh, WordPress has a feature that I liked a little bit last year, which was takeover editing. So if you needed to go and edit someone else's content while they were editing it, um, in Joomla, you just got it checked in and checked out. Um, but in WordPress, you can actually take over the editing of the article and that will close the person's or save and close the person that um, is currently editing it and then load that latest version into your editor. Uh, the Joomla check-in protection, I think, sort of, does the same sort of job there um, if you know what's going on and, and if you're closely watching how that check-in, check-out process is going and know how to read when someone's checked it out. Uh, you can tell whether they've done it accidentally and it's still checked out or whether it's um, uh, something that they're editing right now. Um, so that's sort of balanced out in the last nine months while I've, I've continued to, to summarise on these types of issues. This one uh, is interesting. So at the moment, if you trash an article in Joomla, it will put it into uh, the, the trash. Um, but it will leave it with the same alias that you had when you um, deleted it. And so what happens then is if you were trying to replace that page, um, you would find that it, when you went to delete it, it would have... Um, it will lock you out 
of creating the, the new article with the same alias because it's in the trash. Um, so in WordPress, when you trash an article, it actually adds a underscore to the end of or to the start of the the WordPress equivalent to an alias, um, which is the, the WordPress slug. Um, and that instantly changes the trashed article to being not the same as the alias. So that one, I think, is um, almost worth being a, a new feature request for Drupal 4, um, which I've added to my, when I've learned GitHub, go and do this uh, process. So so you might find that that appears uh, up for discussion in the, the GitHub over time. Uh, so then WordPress does have some aspects of image management that, uh, that are a bit better. Um, when you upload an image, it will try to optimize it or it will um, automatically create the thumbnail, things like that. You sort of do need to do a little bit to set that up along the way. Um, but the Joomla 4 Media Manager, uh, I think, already is starting to show signs that, that it's got the potential there to increase uh, the functionality there. Um, it's not optimizing images when you upload them at the moment, but uh, I think that that's, um, there's a handful of things that are probably worth looking at as a um, future enhancements to that or future plugins to enhance the, the Joomla 4 Media Manager. So. so that sort of wipes out the, oh, sorry, no, there's one more. Uh, Multi-site is um, something that's built into uh, WordPress as a feature, it's not that easy necessarily to get it worked out. But when you do have it worked out, theoretically it gives you economies of scale in that you only need to update one installation and all the plugins on that, that base installation of the multi-site and then all of your other sites stay up to date and maintained. In theory, it's good. In practice, it causes more troubles at times than it's possibly been worth for the few sites that I've got multi-site on. There, there tends to be um, issues once you try and have multiple sites with different design teams um, if they're not all on board. So it's quite good if you've got a silo of sites that all are under single point of management. But if you're not under the single point of management, then um, yeah, I, I tend to like to sort of have my sites linked up to something like um, my sites, your sites, or, or Watchfully, and then uh, use that tool to, to keep it maintained and updated. Um, seems a bit easier. So those were the items that I think sort of WordPress had a little bit of a, um, a lead on over the last 12 months. Um, I think that gap's very quickly closing. Um, and I think that there's, there's going to be a time where um, you know, as more things and, and as more people get involved in the Joomla project um, at a developer level again, um, which is what uh, Philip Walton's going to go into in a later session today, um, I think that the potential is there to, to really um, get things escalated and, and more features in there and market those features better so that, that uh, they're documented properly and that people can actually get uh, an understanding of how that all works. So. So then we've got a common list. Um, so these are a few things that I found that, that both systems really have as their strengths over the rest of the competition quite often. Um, and uh, we'll quickly go through those. So WordPress and Joomla both have versioning um, and the ability to go back and restore a previous article, I think is an essential part. Um, I've had to use other systems like Wix to do a couple of sites and you're effectively live editing straight away. So if you make a, a mistake, there's no going back. Um, you've simply got to redo it. So so those types of tools have their place, but um, but yeah, certainly the ability to go back and, and restore from a revision um, is, is really uh, what's required in, in a proper content management system. Uh, both WordPress and Joomla have an extensive ecosystem of uh, extensions and in WordPress in this case plugins. Um, even though they purport that sort of there's a, a 10 to one ratio of WordPress to Joomla extensions, 
there's a lot of things that aren't that flash in admittedly both ecosystems, um, more so in, I think, in the WordPress ecosystem. So um, you really need to do a trial and error to make sure that you've got the right content, or sorry, the right plugin or extension selected to do the right job. Um, sometimes there'll be conflicts with other things that you've selected to do the job. Um, and ideally, you know, the features are there to be able to do the core job straight away. Clearly, themes and templates are also um, very common to both systems. Um, and it comes down again to sort of how much time you want to invest uh, as to whether you want to put up a, a site that looks pretty and is quite easy to use and doesn't need much maintenance, or whether you are an implementer like me who needs to know how it's all done so that you can uh, roll it out for as many clients as you need to. Um, the flexibility and, and range of things there um, is quite uh, diverse at times. Um, and at the moment, I'm sort of still stepping through trying, trying to find a suitable template framework for me to, um, to go forward with uh, after using a couple of different ones over the years. Um, so if anyone's got something that's clean, fast loading and uh, um, easy to uh, update or, and uh, so we've got easy to update and easy to configure, um, yeah, drop me a line, so. All right, so it's your choice as to which one, which system you prefer. Um, I think I'm talking to a captive audience today. Um, I imagine if you're watching Jay and Beyond, chances are your day job's going to be with Joomla um, and your preference is going to be with Joomla. Um, I think that uh, when you get down to having to sort of work under the hood and, and work in the back end of, of either system, um, you work out what your preference are, preferences are. Um, but I think that the, the structural core of Joomla is, is far more flexible. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing a couple more presentations in the next 20, remaining 22 hours. Um, they go into some of the other ways that you can use Joomla to make a um, uh, use the API and the framework to do different things. So, um, in a couple of discussions in writing some of the magazine articles, I found that uh, um, the possibilities there to make Joomla do effectively a, a headless CMS. So you put all your content into the Joomla backend, but then you have it spitting out data into multiple front ends. Uh, as required to, to deliver the content. And, and I think that's um, another area that Joomla can uh, shine in over, over time. So that's all the slides I've got. Um, if you've got any questions uh, in addition to, to what we've got um, or any that you've spotted um, in there that, uh, that we can... First of all, thank you very much so for doing this presentation for us. So um, uh, you 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 said you were one list, but I think it was three lists at the end yeah. or whatever. Well, yeah, so, you could have a teaser yeah. in there. Yeah. 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 So um, so before we really go into questions, there are, there are, Rob the Robert Jacobi said two questions, but uh, but um, I would use my power to ask my question yeah. first, um, and um, so. What, I, what I'm thinking about is, so you're using both WordPress and Joomla. I've, I have an idea what you prefer, um, but, but when you when you when you could say, so what is one of the features you think WordPress is better than Joomla? Just one thing. It must be a little thing or something. What do you think? This is really good in WordPress and Joomla is not so good, or maybe WordPress is better. The, the blocks editor being in their core, I think is is a bit of a game changer in yeah. regards to, to what you can do out of the box. Um, they've had page builders for years, but making that type of blocks editor into the core, I think yeah. is sort of one of the main areas where it, it, like all of the systems have had WYSIWYG editors since day one. Yeah. Um, both of them traditionally have used Tiny MCE since their inception. Um, but there's only so much you can do 
to make the content WYSIWYG. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're putting an image in, it's hard to make the editor show the image the way that the image is going to appear on the page as you do it. It's hard to associate the template CSS with the content while you're editing it to get that visual feel of a, a full-blown visual layout. And so that was the one thing that, that using the Gutenberg editor um, gave you that visual uh, appeal. It still wasn't always 100% based on yeah. sort of the way it loaded. Um, but if you, yeah, I, I probably come at the whole scenario more from a, an implementer and programming. So, you know, I've been doing HTML sites since 1995 or something like that. Um, second or third year at uni sort of was, was working out what this new thing was. Um, and so quite often I, I prefer to go in and, you know, put a single class in that does the job and does the whole thing based on the CSS instead of putting um, what most of the page editors, page um, creators tend to do is drop in a whole heap of content that is basically just um, uh, putting in a stack of nested div tags or something like that and blow yeah, it something, something yeah. like configuration of, of, of some blocks or something in, in, in JSON. Yeah. In, in JSON or whatever. So, but, but let's add a little bit, bit, bit or I'll go, go further with this Gutenberg thing. So, because, it, um, um, so is there's a follow up question. Um, do you think Joomla can, can benefit from, from Gutenberg because uh, it's already available for Drupal? Do you think it makes sense to, to go this way to, to maybe look if we can integrate Gutenberg and Joomla? Uh, possibly. I mean, it's more. It's, I think it's less the, the fact that the blocks system is there and more that it's a visual editor. So uh -huh. um, if there was a straightforward way of making... Um, so one of the tricks that I do is I'll make a module position called floating and then that's just an allocation of the module position uh -huh. and I'll use modules, modules anywhere to drop the module tag into the content and, and run that. Uh -huh. um, module in line in the code but in the editor all you ever see is what the module call is you don't see the module render in the, the editor mm -hmm. um, so i think that's probably the the one thing that would change how it all um how you visualize your content creation um by looking at making things that are called straight away appearing in the, the code so um, one of the few that I've, I've started using that does that is um, OS Embed, which creates a, a JCE plugin to a degree. And if you paste your YouTube URL, then it will convert that straight away into um, displaying the YouTube video. Um, but again, I prefer a more granular approach. So I've got a, instead a re-replace a rule that loads the YouTube code in and then sets all the parameters when it converts it into a, a plugin to make that appear. Um, so it comes down to sort of what you're trying to do and how you're trying to do it. Um, there probably is a place for a Gutenberg style block based editor in Joomla. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there's still a difference between blocks and modules. Um, yes, yeah, so there's also another question. So about, um, I'm, I have to say, I don't really um, understand the question, but I would ask them. It's also from Robert Jacobi. As a blog explanta uh, explanation is correct, but curious how Patrick thinks how models and blocks are different with regards to templates. I think that's, yeah, a, so, that's a big area for me. So yeah, yeah. templates are, are, are a lot, but but maybe maybe you can say, say a little bit about this question. Yeah, so I, I think that sort of the blocks are more designing a, a graphical element in Gutenberg. Um, it can also be used to drop in a, a short code, um, which is sort of the, the same as a plugin code in WordPress. Uh, sorry, a plugin code in Joomla would be a short code in, uh, in WordPress. Mm -hmm. um, again, the Gutenberg editor converts that short code into a, a preview in a lot of cases. Um, and that's probably the biggest difference there. So. 
how, how Joomla modules work as this, like they don't tend to necessarily always work as a block. Right. Um, so your, your login module as such, it has a very specific job. Yeah. Your list of articles would have a very specific job. So um, there is some overlap, but I don't know that they're, um, I don't know that blocks would replace modules in that regard. Yeah. Um, but certainly the ability for you to place modules around a Joomla template is um, the Joomla template structure strength in that it puts it all into the one um, uh, assignment structure, which, which I think makes more, at least makes yeah. more sense to me. And yeah. again, is, is one of the main reasons, you know, I, I chose man bots and modules 15 years ago, rather than um, trying to work out what the widget was doing, because yeah. it, it didn't make sense on the day that I looked at it in 2004. Okay, so yeah, thank you very much. So I, I don't think there are more questions. There, there's one, but it's more a statement. I don't think it's really a question. So um, that's right. So I've been, I've been watching all the Australians that have been yeah. watching today. So, so maybe, for, maybe for the people outside, if you ask a question, just ask a question uh, yep. and make, make it make it clear that it is a question. Maybe there's an exclamation mark at the end. Uh, so, so I know I know what Neil's actually asking there. So Neil Robinson's one of our Australian community. He's based in Tasmania. Mm -hmm. um, he's, he's fairly lonely down there. We haven't found any of the other Joomla developers that are in Tasmania yet. Um, it probably makes him almost the southernmost Joomla professional in the world, um, mm -hmm. in, unless there's someone in South America somewhere, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, he's right. The Joomla extension directory um, recently took out all of the extensions that only supported old versions of Joomla as a cleanup. So um, the WordPress one, once you're in there, you're in there. And if as part of how you do your homework on putting an extension or a plugin in is to look at the reviews and look at the last time it was updated and look at how many people are using it. Um, and you can very quickly cull the, the potential candidates to do a particular job simply by taking it out and, and working out what else you need to, to do. So, yeah. Okay, so again, thank you for, for doing this presentation for us here in uh, all over the world and, and um, down from Australia. I think it worked very well. Good. Um, and um, yeah, have a good day. So thank you. See you. I'll keep watching. Yeah. Bye bye.